What's good team? Welcome to another Small James Coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about how we can add NPM to your projects. So if you're just writing vanilla HTML, CSS and JavaScript, we're going to look at three different methods, each with their own advantages and disadvantages on how you can incorporate all of these node package manager packages or modules into your project. So the package we're going to be working with today is chart.js. So if we look that up, we can see that chart.js is an NPM package. We have all the information just here. And let's say in our project, we had a whole lot of data that we don't know how to add to our project. So what are the options? Well, the first option is the least adaptive, but the easiest to implement. And it's using what's known as a CDN package. So if we go into Google and type in chart.js CDN package, where CDN stands for content delivery network, we can see that we have this CDN.js just here, and we can access this chart.js library by coming into this page just here and selecting this top script tag. And we can come into the head of our document and paste in that script tag just there. And that's going to enable us to use some chart.js package elements inside of the script of our document here. So this CDN package method allows us to essentially import a JavaScript script or module, and then we can access it within our own script document at the bottom of this index.html file. So in this particular instance, what we would do is we would copy this script tag in as we have, come over to their documentation. They're obviously telling us to use npm install chart.js. We'll get to this method shortly. And now if we check out the documentation on the GitHub page, that should tell us how to work this particular package. And we can see just here that they have given us some documentation on how we can use this particular graph. So if we were just to copy this in here, including this chart element, so let's add this chart element and then let's copy in this script just here and come back to our document, refresh that page, and we can see that nothing works. And it looks like they actually have a separate CDN. You can see that this is the CDN they're choosing to use. And so we could try replacing these two just here, paste that in, refresh our document. And now we actually have a node package manager script running inside of our file via the CDN method. So this was super easy. All we had to do was find the appropriate CDN link paste it into the head of our document, and then we can access that information in the script of our document. You can see just here we're using new chart, where chart is a method available within the scope of this script. So wherever the script is available, we can then use these script elements. And you can see here that all we have to do is pass the, uh, pass the HTML attribute that we're using into the new chart, and then that consequently gets built out onto our page. So that is method one. Method two is using Vite. So if we just come over to Google and type in Vt init and look at their documentation, we can then see in their documentation that we can have a vanilla JavaScript project or you know any of these other types of projects equally, but we're just going to focus on vanilla JavaScript in this particular instance. And what we can do is we can initialize a project using npm and create and then add all of our dependencies to that. So for this example, what we're going to do is come back over to our Visual Studio Code editor open a new terminal and we're going to type in the command npm create latest. Now the condition for using this method is that you do have node.js installed on your machine. I can check that mine is installed because if I run node-v it's working. And so now I can npm create latest. That's going to ask us to install the following package which is create v. So we're going to want that. So we'll type y and go yes. We'll give the project a name and I'll just call it v example. We want a vanilla framework. Once again, you could use any of these. We'll just go with JavaScript. Now that's all done. We can CD into a Vite example just here. We can see that code is accessible in here. This comes with a whole lot of boilerplate code and it is run slightly differently. With this, I'm just using open with live server to execute it inside of my browser. A vanilla project with Vite actually runs using node. So you can see in here that we have a package.json. This is, you know, typical to any kind of Node.js project. So we're going to be using that. We've CD'd into it, and now we have a template that we don't run using open server. Instead, we'll execute this using npm run dev. Now that didn't work because we have to actually install everything first. So I'm going to run npm i. And so we can see that that has executed and that has added a node modules file. And so now if we try this npm run dev command again, that should execute this vite start script just here. We do indeed start that and we can see that our project is opened up on localhost 5173. 
So if we open that in our browser, we can see that we get the boilerplate code for a Vite project. And if we just click on the Vite logo to learn more and count this, we can see that we have some basic functionality. Now, just like we had our index.html file just here, the only file in the Vite project directory that's really important is this index.html file. We can really emphasize that by coming in here and deleting a lot of the random code. So if we delete the style folder, we delete the counter.js, delete all of that. The public has nothing really significant. So we're essentially down to just a random SVG file, a package.json, which I said comes with this node installation style. And now we can comment out the script because we don't need it. That was just using uh, the main.js script that was uh, that I deleted a second ago. And now we can come in here and type whatever we want as we were before. James is cool, save that. And you can see that we have the exact same setup that we had over here, except now we can add packages using npm install instead of the CDN. This is going to give us a greater functionality and depth of utility with the package that we use because the CDN packages are often limited in terms of their functionalities that they bring. So there's a bit more configuration, but if we wanted to go ahead and use chart.js, this time all we would do is copy this command, close this, install npm i chart.js, now we can see that that installation has finished. If we look at our package.json, we can see that chart.js is added to our dependencies. So this is a different way of managing NPM packages instead of using all of the CDN files. And so just as we did before, we should be able to follow the rest of it. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this element into our Vt example right here. And now that we have that element copied across, we can do the script. So I've come into the step-by-step -step guide just over here after doing the installation and having the dev dependencies added like we have. What we can do is we can do a bit of a slightly different version as what they've done here. We can import chart from that package. We can create this function, if I can just copy that. So just like this, this is a self-calling function. So that would just execute as soon as the thing loads. And now what we can do is we can just target my chart from here. Let's copy and paste that. And we can see that that didn't work because we just have to make sure that this is a module script. So now if we refresh this page, we once again have this NPM functioning inside of our document. So that is also a really easy way that you can integrate NPM packages. This is probably the method I would recommend using if you're looking to add npm to a vanilla JavaScript HTML CSS project is just using Vite. Vite gives you a great developer environment and it's super easy to configure all of these projects. You get the full functionality without having to actually transition to a React framework or any other kind of JavaScript framework. So those are our first two methods. Just to summarize, we get more functionality from using Vite and installing it via npm than just adding it as a CDN link to our, the head of our document. So for our third example, what we're going to do is use a JavaScript framework to incorporate Node packages. A lot of these frameworks are actually built using Node and they will come with their own package.json files so you can add all these dependencies to them and use them inside of your projects. So for that, what we're actually going to do is once again, use that Vite command that we had earlier, except this time what we're going to do is create create a React project. So I'm just going to come into here and execute this npm create vite. Once again, we're going to name it React example. We're going to, instead of selecting vanilla this time, select a React project, just have JavaScript. We can see that comes up there. So we can cd into a React example, run npm install so that we have all of the node modules installed. Currently, we don't have anything up there. So now we can see that that installation has finished running and our node modules file has been added. So what we can do now is go npm run dev. Once again, we have the package.json file and we can see that there's a dev script in there. And we can also see that two dependencies have already been added. So these are npm packages. We can now open this up on localhost. 5173, so this is Vite and React. So now what we can do is we can come into the source file. Basically how it works in the React infrastructure is we don't add anything to the index.html file necessarily. Instead what it does is use this main.jsx file to basically create a whole lot of HTML from our component tree and then render that HTML within the root div which is just here and so the base level of react project is the app.js we can kick everything out of here just like that so now we have an empty project empty screen we could go ahead and delete a whole lot of these files because they're just not necessary 
and then remove it all from our app. Run that again, it's still looking for source.main, which is now fine. So we have a blank React project. I can once again type James is cool. Just the same thing. However, this time what we can do is we can even go a step beyond using just a standard NPM package and we can use React Chart.js where someone has been kind enough to actually go ahead and create a React specific version, still an NPM package except it's more functional for React. We can go ahead and install these. We can see that this is actually two separate packages. So two separate NPM packages, Chart.js and React Chart.js. So we'll go ahead and close this, install both of them. Now that they're installed, we can execute our project, get that up and running again. And now if we come into their documentation, we can see that here's an example. So all we have to do is copy this uh, in and we can just have the import statement up the top just like that. And then in our actual component, we can render out this line component just like that. So let's just make sure that this is up here. We don't need it twice. So we can get rid of that. And now if we come into our React project, we have an issue and it looks like we can fix this problem just by adding this import statement just here. It's obviously something specific to this package. So we can just come up here and add that in the top. And now we can see that our data is once again displaying and we can you know, interact with the functionalities of the chart. It's got the three months, all the labels added, and we are now using this NPM package with inside of our React project. So to summarize everything we've done in this video, you can see that there are three easy ways that we can incorporate NPM into our vanilla JavaScript and HTML CSS projects. They each have a different level of setup, but with the latter two examples, you'll get a whole lot more functionality out of it. If you just want to stick to your vanilla HTML CSS development, then I'd recommend going with the Vite example because you just have this standard HTML file that you work with as per usual, except now you have the ability to add NPM packages directly to your package.json and use all of the NPM commands in your terminal. Super easy to just install a package by typing NPM I in, or NPM install package name. If you really want to go 150%, you can just upgrade to a JavaScript framework to do all of your front-end programming. And once again, you can use the npm install commands to add npm packages. And if you really just like bare bones, simple solutions, then I'd recommend sticking to the CDN packages. You'll still get 95% functionality out of the box. You may just be limited in some examples. Anyway, I hope that helped you guys upgrade to NPM, start getting more functionality in your projects today. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, sub, hit the notification bell, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.